Hello friends. Today we are going to talk about paranoid personality disorder. Paranoid personality disorder it should fulfill all the other criteria for the personality disorder. That means they have repeated patterns of behavior which are deviated from the normal and has been causing personal distress or distress to others and the onset has been in late childhood or adolescence and there is no other organic cause and there is no other mental disorder. On top of that, at least four of the following must be present. Number one, so we are talking about paranoid personality disorder. In paranoid personality disorder, excessive sensitivity to setbacks and rebuffs. So a person is very sensitive, excessive. Sensi sensitivity to setbacks if there is anything you can't achieve or you didn't achieve you become very suspicious and paranoid and similarly any rebuffs if anybody says something to you you haven't done right they become excessively sensitive that is a feature of paranoid personality disorder and if this pattern is present for a long time they will fulfill the criteria. Number two, tendency to bear grudges persistently. Example, refusal to forgive, forgive insults, injuries or slights. So, bear grudges If you have suffered any insult or small injury or some injury or even something minor, you be a crutch against the other person who has caused them and that remains there for, for a long time, forever and it affects the person to change their behavior. Number three, suspiciousness. Suspiciousness and pervasive tendency to distort experience by misconstruing the natural or friendly actions of others as hostile or contemptuous. So you are very suspicious and there is pervasive tendency to distort experience and you misconstrue so misconstrue means if something was normal or said in a joke they will not take the joke and they will be very suspicious about their intentions and it can be even if you are friendly with somebody if they have made any actions you are looking those actions in a suspicious way and you can be hostile and you can even argue with them so that is their tendency to argue all the time Number four, they have a combative and tenacious sense of personal rights out of keeping with the actual situation. So they have combative and tenacious sense of personal rights 
out of keeping with the actual situation. So they will just come barge, angry, and uh, they, 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 there is no other way. They, they want what is their right. Number five, they have recurrent suspicions without justification regarding sexual fidelity of spouse or sexual partner. So, sexual fidelity. They do not trust their partner. They believe that the partner is going out with others, having sex, talking about them. That is, could be one of these. Remember, out of in paranoid personality disorder, out of all of these seven, there has to be at, le at least four. We have talked about up to five, and we will continue with the number six. There is persistent self-referential attitude. So what does it mean? Persistent self referen referential attitude. In this case, if somebody has said something to somebody else, the person who has got paranoid personality disorder believes they are talking about me. They have told me or they telling the other person in a way but it means them so they are taking everything personal reference to them associated particularly with excessive self-importance and they, they believe that the others are saying things they are not joking they are not saying things but they mean it number seven preoccupation with Absurd, ups, absubstantiated, conspiratorial explanation of events. So they have, there is preoccupation. When the event has happened, they keep on believing that things were being there was a conspiracy against them and there is no substantial evidence for that despite that there is no evidence they still believe others are conspiring against them and explanations of events either immediate to the patient or in the world at large. So they are preoccupied most of the time. So if you fulfill the criteria of journal personality disorder, which is the behavior deviation and ruling out all the organic causes or other main, ma major mental disorder, and if uh, the behavior has been persistent with clear onset in early adolescence or late adolescence or late childhood and the pervasiveness is there that will lead to the diagnosis of paranoid personality disorder.